It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Thursday evening, June the 7th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My job tonight is to help new traders earn consistent profits using a simple and reliable trading strategy. And my plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow's trading session. And tonight, I'm covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. Starting off this evening, crude oil is bullish, but trading at the high of a major range isn't a great place to start buying now. So I'm waiting for a bear trap and seller failures down in the battle zone support level tomorrow morning. The S&P is bullish and headed back to the highs for tomorrow morning. I have my eyes on a hidden support trend line for buying opportunities on Friday morning. NASDAQ is bearish, but a recent grind break of a channel combined with this being the first pullback after this big bull run tells me to look for buying opportunities ahead of a potential reversal back to the highs tomorrow morning. Gold is range bound and sitting smack in the middle this evening, so I'm staying patient to buy low and sell high, avoiding those middles right with failure patterns tomorrow morning. And last but not least in the euro, the euro is bullish with a spike in range pattern tonight, and I have my eyes on a few range expansion support levels for buying opportunities tomorrow morning. Definitely have an interesting chart to look at tonight on the euro, so make sure you stay tuned for more on that. As always, I have another great newsletter in store for you guys and gals tonight. We're going into a Friday trading session tomorrow. We might have a bit of a summer Friday feel to it, the way this week has gone. But nonetheless, though, we we'll get a bunch of reliable trading opportunities for Friday's session. Before I jump into charts and put the plan together for tomorrow's Friday session, I need to remind you, if you're watching me on YouTube this evening, you can find a detailed description of the entire trading strategy written out here on my blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in tonight's video, please remember to post them in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, please help support this channel by subscribing and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post another video. And if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade, head over to sidewaysmarkets.com, over to our our trading blog. This is where all the action happens every day and make sure you join our mailing list. Give me your name and your email address in the upper left hand corner and I'll shoot you an email every time I publish something new. That way you always are in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade. And don't forget, lower left hand corner, I'm always posting charts, links, videos, text, quotes, all kinds of great stuff on my social media channels. If you're on social, follow me in the lower left hand corner. You will not be disappointed there and don't forget don't forget to click here right to download today's charts all the charts from tonight's video that's right you can have them on your computer for tomorrow right where it says click here to download today's charts grab those charts right and have them ready for tomorrow's session and speaking of tomorrow's session upper right hand corner I've got a free pass for you if you're not a member here at School of Trade and you'd like to come out and learn my trading strategy grab that free pass in the upper right hand corner and come out and grab a deep dive right into the trading strategy we use every day in our trade room and if you have any questions about anything covered here tonight don't forget you can post those questions in the comment section below the video or you can use live support on the right hand side of the website right to type in questions and I'll be there to answer your questions as well all right guys let's jump right in here we got a busy busy night tonight setting up for tomorrow tomorrow of course is Friday right Friday June the 8th uh, this is the first Friday of the summertime season and of course uh, with Memorial Day weekend uh, behind us now this is the first you know quote unquote summer Friday right so of course summer Fridays are usually marked by a little bit lower volume right smaller window of opportunity and typically summer Fridays are also going to have a little bit of action in the afternoon right because the volume tends to dry up so summertime Friday my rule on Fridays is always the same get to it early early in early out make that money and get out of there before things start getting too sloppy and choppy you will see typically 
on a summer Friday, you will typically see some fluttering price action in the afternoon session as the volume dries up. But it is it is uh, extremely unreliable price action. So I wouldn't trust it. I would make your money tomorrow. Uh, I plan on making my money tomorrow in the early part right of the morning session between 8 a.m. and 11 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. So please be aware of that. As you can see, there's no major news on the calendar here for tomorrow. So, you know, we are we are basically going to be watching the opening bells at 8.20 on gold and euro, 9 o'clock crude, 9.30 e-mini, 10 o'clock shock tomorrow morning, right? And of course, that transition into lunch around 11 o'clock. I'm expecting tomorrow morning to be a great session, but I won't be surprised based on some of the sluggishness we've seen in the early hours this week so far. We talked about that last night on the newsletter. The first few hours of the day this week have been pretty quiet, and we may see more of that tomorrow morning. So patience, 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 waiting for the best patterns as we go into this this summertime trading session get it right get it early tomorrow that's going to be your clue your uh, your key right to trading a summertime friday session all right let's jump right in we got a lot to cover here tonight we got crude oil s p nasdaq gold we'll wrap up on the euro here this evening starting off tonight with the black gold the texas t right the crude oil futures crude is bullish with a strong move back to the high of this trading range now i want to buy this market because momentum is strong to the upside right now but i need to avoid buying into this range high so my plan is to look for much more reliable buying opportunities on a two-legged pullback down into that battle zone below and if price keeps pushing higher i'm focused on buying what we call bear traps because there will be sellers above the highs tomorrow morning boy really really interesting chart here and this could be a bit of a challenge tomorrow because you've got a couple forces that are coming into play here first of all as you recall we had this strong move down right at the beginning of the week and then now we've settled into we talked about this last night right we settled into this trading range with double tops and double bottoms so we know we have this trading range and of course a range wants to rotate from the high down to the low the low up to the high the high down to that low and the low up to the high right so now as we're back to that high the sellers are are going to want to rotate this market down to those lows here tomorrow and they may be successful as you can see here right we've seen a couple very dramatic moves off of that high and we may see similar tomorrow morning right for all i know but what i do know right now is is the momentum is very strong here to the upside we saw a rather right rather strong bull run in today's session and we have as you can see here right this bull channel coming up off of the low up off of that high now as we talked about range rotation whenever i see a nice strong channel like this i always expect to see a two-legged pullback and a retest of that high if you've watched my newsletter before right I sound like a broken record. I talk about this every time we have a nice strong channel, right? Looking for a two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. So that's one option for tomorrow. Nice deep pullback and a retest of that high. Another option tomorrow would be if this price continues to go higher, right? I've got to worry about sellers trying to sell this market back down in, right? So I've got to focus on my buying opportunities down around the low, right, of that of that channel. Last but not least, right, last but not least, we may see this market turn back to the downside. And honestly, it's going to take very similar right to what we saw in yesterday morning session where it just collapses and then gives us the green light to be a seller back down right to the opposite side so if we are going to be a seller tomorrow it's going to have to be after very obvious proof that these bears have taken back the momentum of the market so as we dig in here right now focusing first on the buy side here first right i'm looking for a deep pullback right back to the high of that range and then of course a runner or a next leg up to that 6685 level which is also a prior month closing level right which should have some confluence there for the targets so let's plan this out how do we get into these trades right now well i'd like to see first of all i'd like to get us in right off a two-legged pullback right and that of course would be one leg right 
two leg that'll bring the moving average over and from here what I'm looking for is I'm looking for sellers to try to sell that pullback to the moving average remember to get an edge over the opposite side of the market one of the easiest ways to get that edge is to basically run stops and so I'm looking for sellers to try to sell that move back down to the low of that range and if I can get them to sell to sell short at the moving average now I know where their stops are because if I was a seller right that's where my stops would be make that a little bit larger for next time there right that's where my stops would be and so I want to look for a buy into those stops that typically results in a strong push higher that strong push higher will bring that moving average over right and then we can buy the pullback to the moving average so I basically call this a two try right one try two try right so we get a two right two-legged pullback retest of the high I'm looking for a seller failure pattern as the sellers try to sell at the moving average I'm looking for right a a bull pullback pattern as it pulls back to the moving average and makes that run higher that's if the price right can pull back here for us now we may also see us go sideways here tomorrow in other words we may also see the market right up down up down you know we with the momentum going higher here and the sellers we assume selling off the highs here we just we may not get anywhere and this thing may end up going sideways tomorrow if it does go sideways moving average kind of flattens out double tops double bottoms then we're still looking at the same area here to be a buyer but now we want to look for what we call the two try rule one try below the range two tries below the range and then looking to buy right that second try right one try two try below that range looking to buy that second try failure now for a move back up right to retest that high the next scenario the third scenario here is going to be where you need to see a strong move higher because as we go higher right what if we don't pull back what if we don't go sideways what if we try to go higher here we try to go higher here now what I have to see is I've got to get this moving average up above the top of this range then I want to try to combine the low of this channel along with a two-legged pullback one two if I can get a two-legged pullback combined with the low of that range and with that moving average above that range right I can buy that pullback and a lot of times what happens is it looks like this right we'll keep going higher we're grinding higher grinding higher right the moving average comes up and what we get is we get a strong move back right we go below the moving average bears now once again try to sell it short right but look for those seller failures here now what happens right it ends up blasting higher if I can draw that moving average a little bit better here right ends up blasting higher right into a pullback and we go from there that'd be another option for us right as the market goes higher but make no mistake about it I do not want to buy as the market is going higher here right because we have to remember right we have that big trading range and we're probably going to see quite a few sellers here trying to fade this move back in what I want to see is a deep pullback right and back up we go or if we go sideways here I want to see that one try two try back up from there or right up two-legged pullback right and go from there right so up down and sideways we've got it all covered but what I want to do next though is I want to remind you if you're here for the first time today I'm gonna to be going over a lot of patterns and a lot of terminology that you probably haven't heard before you know two try rule failure patterns strength pullbacks traps uh, two-legged pullbacks trading ranges I want to give you a deeper dive into all the terminology into more of what I do every day right in my trade room and to do that rather than spend the next three hours here on this newsletter I won't bore you with that I'm gonna give you a free trading class in the upper right hand corner grab that free class pause the video I'll be here when you come back register for that class that will give you a deeper dive into my trading strategy all the terminology all the technical analysis we use I'll show you some great 
great examples of each pattern on real charts, right, moving markets. That way you can get a better grip. And when you come back tomorrow night on the newsletter, right, you'll be able to really participate uh, and take the full advantage of, of, this, uh, of this nightly newsletter. All right, so grab that free class. I'll keep, I'll keep reminding you about that for the rest of tonight's newsletter. But make sure you do that because it will be a good use of your time. Now, last but not least, we have the Bulls taken care of. What do the Bears need tomorrow? Three things, right? The Bears need three things. Something like this, right? A strong move down. That strong move down will bring that moving average over. At this point, the Bears have the option now with, again, with a strong move down, the Bears have the ability now to reverse this trend. If they can show another strong move, in other words, a three-legged strength move, one, two, three. If we can get a strong move down, a pull back to the moving average, right, and then a strong move through, that now tells me the buyers have lost their grip, the momentum has changed, and now I want to sell with a goal of going back down to that low at 64.28. I'm going to mark up those highs. Well, sorry. I'm going to mark up those lows, copy that trend line up to those highs, and I'm looking for selling opportunities off of that high tomorrow morning, right, with a target going back down to retest that low. So relatively easy strategy here for crude. The key is while the buyers have control, buy low. Don't buy high because of where we are, right, at the high of this range. And don't even think about selling this market until we see some significant and, and of course, sustained momentum to the downside, right? Do not take that bait and try to chase the move lower because at first it'll probably come right back up or at least try right to come right back up and retest that high. And that's what professionals are waiting for to buy tomorrow morning. Let's keep going. How about some S&P now? The E-mini, the S&P uh, 500 is bullish and trying to retest today's double top high. And with the measured move approaching overhead, I'm looking for buying opportunities down at support levels rather than resistance levels as we go higher tomorrow morning. This is a very, very good looking chart. It's a great example of a lot of different things, most of which we talked about in last night's newsletter. Before I go into details, though, I do want to remind you, we are still watching rollover right now. Um, we're, we're still watching this rollover between the 618 and the 918 contract on the S&P, you probably got an email from your broker, you probably got a notice from your charting software today that today was the official rollover day uh, on the E-minis, but as you can see here, the volume is still higher on that 618 contract. Now that may not last very long, and remember, it's very, very simple. Once the volume is higher, once the total daily volume is higher on that 918 contract, we're going to dump the 618 and go trade the 918 tomorrow. It might be tomorrow morning. It might be tomorrow afternoon. It might it might be overnight. It might not be till Monday. We don't know until we actually see that volume uh, change hands. As I mentioned last night, we were wondering if it was going to happen today. Didn't happen today, so we'll be trading, of course, until for, until we see different. We're trading that 618 contract on the S&P, the NASDAQ, and it looks like the Dow and the NASDAQ are starting to get pretty close if I look at this market analyzer, you can see the NASDAQ's looking pretty close here right now. Is that NASDAQ right looking pretty close? The Dow looking pretty close as well. The Dow barely right is, is above the 918 contract right now. So as you can see here, we are coming down to the wire when it comes to uh, contract rollover here on the E-minis. Don't get too worried about it, right? Don't let contract rollover spook you. It's nothing to worry about. Just make sure you've got right the right contract month. Trade the front month that has the most amount of volume tomorrow. All right. Now, as I got that out of the way, let's take a zoom out here. Let's jump in a helicopter and get a bird's eye view of this of this move. Now, we talked about this in last night's newsletter, right? Strong move up in yesterday's session. What do we always talk about whenever we have a nice strong bear channel or, or channel? What, what do we do, right? You got it. Two-legged pullback and a retest up that high. We just talked about this right on the oil, right? Oil has a strong move up. 
We're looking for a two-legged pullback so we can buy it going back up to retest the high. I know, I know. I say this every night on the newsletter. But, you know, you were once brand new, too. You you were once the first-time first time viewer here as well. So got to make sure we teach everybody here every evening. So I know most of you guys know this already, and you probably see this stuff in your sleep at night. But uh, the reality is, if you're new here, right, strong move up, two-legged pullback. And now we're trying to go back, right, and retest that high. So I want to be – I want to buy, but I don't want to buy inside this no trade zone I have a right measured move target coming in overhead at that 75 half I don't want to buy into the high I want to buy low I want to buy at support right I don't want to buy into resistance and we're starting to get closer to that level of resistance here as we go higher here so I'm trying to find levels of support right now that I can be a buyer on tomorrow morning so I'm not buying too high here here's here's a great looking support level if I draw that trend line down overhead, you'll notice they used it as resistance. They used it as support, right? And I'm going to try to use it as support tomorrow as well. Back down to that trend line, right? And back up from there. I also have, I'm connecting these highs up here. Connecting these highs up here, right? I'm drawing it down to this low. And this is creating kind of like a little hidden channel here. Right, and I'd like to buy off of that low. Right, so that's another level of support that I can use for tomorrow. And then, if you really want to get sneaky, these are usually the ones that work the best. You take that high, right? Take that high trend line, bring it on down here. Yep, and create kind of like a little bit of a hidden, right? A little bit of a hidden, what I would call a multi tiered channel right see that how that channel kind of multis out right you got half up off of the top half on the bottom yeah well that's also another right a great option here as well right so want to be a buyer down at that support level so as you can see i've created this battle zone down here using this trend line right this trend line and i'd like to see the market pull back right so we can buy off of that low and in all reality you could say well look joe it's also it's a nice strong channel Right, two-legged pullback and a retest the high. Right, absolutely. Markets are fractal, which means the same plan for the bigger picture. Strong move up, two-legged pullback and a retest of the high. Right, that same plan. Right, that same plan goes for the small picture. Strong move up, two-legged pullback. Right, and a retest of that high. Heck, it even works in the opposite direction. Right, strong move down, two-legged pullback, retest of that low. I'm not making this stuff up, guys. Right, you can see for yourself on this chart. Right, I wish I could manipulate the time, the price action like that. Right, I just simply have picked up on these patterns over the years, and I help my clients uh, use these patterns. Right, with combination of mental discipline, proper risk management, right, and a little bit of fun along the way every day in our trade room. So. We know we have some support. I know I want to be a buyer. Here are the patterns, right, that I'm looking for here tomorrow. You'll notice we're already at the moving average right now. So if we pull back, what's going to happen? If we pull back, we're looking for one of these bad boys, right? A one, a two, up and go, right? A one, a two, up and go, right? So if we do pull back here right now, watch for that strong move down. Again, get in that battle zone, get down to that right down to that rising support trend line. That'll bring the moving average over. The bears will try to sell this sucker, and they might be successful. We'll talk about that in a moment, right? But I have to assume they're not going to be as they want to go back to retest that high, right? So, of course, now we know where their stops are. I can now be a buyer into those stops, and I can then look for, right, that pullback, right, to buy from there, right? So seller failure pattern into buyer pullback down into that battle zone dig down deep into that 66 67 68 handle right and let's look for the buy going back up to retest that high now that's if the price pulls back what if we keep going higher here you know heck for all i know maybe this is a a wedge right maybe it starts wedging out here as it goes higher right maybe it keeps going higher here what do i do then well at that point i'm running right into this level of resistance overhead and here's something you always want to remember. Anytime you're in a bull market and you're running into what, a, what, what should be an objective, right, or some sort of target for the bulls, you then want to start thinking for traps, right, traps. So traps basically mean look left, 
find some of these prior swings and wait to buy right down below those prior swings. So whenever you find yourself in a position where you're thinking, man, I don't want to buy into this resistance, but it just it just keeps on going higher. It's not pulling back for me, right? Stay patient. Eventually, those buyers will reject the idea of buying high, right? Just like a car dealership listing a brand new Mercedes at too high of a price and nobody buys it and they've got to drop the price to get people to buy it, right? Same thing will happen here. As the market goes higher, if it doesn't pull back, eventually buyers are going to go, I'm not paying that much, right? It's too expensive. They'll reject the idea of buying. That will lead to less demand for that market, which will eventually, which will eventually pull back. It'll pull back far enough, right, until the price is low enough, right, to reach demand, right, at a lower price. Same thing. We're just doing it here, right, on the S&P and, of course, using it on a chart instead of, uh, you know, any other supply and demand scenario out there. So waiting for the pullback, right, as the market, right, as the market uh, goes higher here. Uh, last but not least, it doesn't look like we're going sideways on this. I'd be surprised if we do. But if we do see, if we do see a sideways range here, you know, let's just say, for example, you know, tomorrow, Friday morning, summertime Friday, if it does go sideways there, no big deal. Look for those buys, right, down below the low of that range. Right, so if it's going sideways tomorrow, we're kind of sitting there slopping around. We're not going up. We're not going down. We're just kind of going sideways. Wait, wait for double tops, double bottoms, and then right, and then look for right, and then look for that buy down below that low. That trade, that pattern opportunity, is going to take some t take some patience, right? Because you you have to wait for a while, and right when you're about losing patience on this, right, that's when you're going to want to get in at those lows. That's what will pull back. And you'll be, you'll be you'll be thankful that you saved your capital, right, to put it to work down below that low. Last but not least here on the S&P, how do we reverse? What does a reversal look like? Strength, pull back to the moving average. And what else? Strength, move through, right? Strength, pull back, strength, right? Strength, pull back, strength. Then mark up those new lows. Yep, mark up that new high. And what else we got, right? Up, and we look to sell up from there. Right, pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. Just we're gonna do what? We gotta make sure that we don't predict the reversal. Wait for the reversal, right? What I mean by that is wait for a strong move down. Because remember, if that strong move down fails, we're going right back to the high again, right? That's that failure pattern we talked about earlier. Strong move down, pull back, strong move through. That gives me the green light, right? And now we're off the races to the downside. Watch that rollover for tomorrow on the S and P, and again on the Nasdaq as well. Nasdaq. You know, it's always tough on rollover nights because, uh, you know, this this chart may be worthless, right? But it should be something similar to this uh, on the NASDAQ 918 contract. As I'm watching right now, the 618 still has more volume than that 918. Okay, this one could be ugly tomorrow. Very, very good example. Great learning opportunity here right now. But this could be ugly because just like on oil, there are two sides of the of, of the market that are going to be kind of colliding here, right, around that battle zone overhead. Let's dig in. The NASDAQ is bearish. But with this move lower being the first real pullback, hold on, there we go, right, with this move lower, right, being the first real pullback off the highs of this week's bull run, yeah, just a little bullish, right, I assume buyers are trying to go back and retest the high. Yeah, I would assume, right, two-legged pullback, we retest that high. The big clue on this chart, hold on, do 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 back in, right? The big clue on this chart is the grind break. Okay, this grind break right there. Okay, the grind break, which is which which basically means it broke free of the bear channel with allowing sell without allowing sellers really sell very high here today. Okay, that grind break is a big clue. We talk about it all day, every day in our trade room. We've seen a lot of them this week. This one just happens to be on the NASDAQ. Okay, so the big clue in this chart is the grind break. That grind break basically tells me that sellers with their strong move down were never really given a very good price to sell at. They didn't really get a big two-legged pullback. Right, all they got here was just kind of like one and a half legs. You know, it's a, it's a two-legged pullback, but typically when you see that much strength, they're going to snap up, right, and then back down. I would imagine sellers were waiting to sell a little bit higher, 
right? And they probably are still waiting up there to sell high. So this tells me that sellers are likely waiting to sell at a higher price tomorrow, right? Giving the buyers now kind of this window of opportunity to run this market higher. And if the sellers can't hold this overhead battle zone, we should see a move back up to retest the highs right tomorrow morning, okay? This, this whole scenario reminds me of like, you know, mom and dad turning their back, right? And the kid grabs some candy off the top shelf, right, in the cupboard, right? Well, what, what's happening right now is, is we have, again, kind of put this all together here, a strong, I mean, obviously a strong move. The entire month of June has been bullish, right, so far. We get a two-legged pullback, and we're expecting to see, right, little traps down here, a move back up to retest that high, okay? Now, while they're, while they're doing this, though, we cannot deny the fact that there's a strong move down, right? Look at the strength there. That's a lot of momentum to the downside. And if you're a client of mine, I hope you're saying, but Joe, we don't have enough strength going higher yet to call this a bull market. Remember, when the market's bearish, what does it take to reverse the trend? Strength, pullback, strength. Aha, we don't have that strength, do we? So that's why I said this is a bearish market right now, right? It is a bear market, okay? So we have the potential to go back to the highs, but the momentum hasn't shifted there yet, okay? This is where the grind break comes in, okay? And this is where having some experience goes a long way. And this is why I say what, what we're trying to do tomorrow, at least at the upside right now, is try to sneak some candy, right, while mom and dad aren't, aren't looking. Okay, so strong move down, right? Strong move down. They barely pull back. Again, sellers were likely waiting to sell up here. And usually what happens is when we don't get a really deep pullback after those real strong moves down, usually what happens is, is we usually struggle to go lower. We end up coming higher and then sellers are waiting right up here, right? Oftentimes what happens is it goes strong move down, shallow pullback, right? And then trap high, right? And then it, and then it runs back down again. Okay. So we're right here right now, right? There's that, there's that channel coming down, right? So sellers, they're trying to sell short up here, right? And that gives the buyers a window now, see what I'm doing here, right? It gives the buyers a window now to run it back against them. And then if they fail, we run higher. If they don't fail though, we're going to end up running back down to those lows again. So that's why I said this is this could be a mess tomorrow because again you've got you've got a, a, a couple you know without using that without without going too far with the analogy right you've got a you got a few too many cooks in the kitchen right now a few too many hands right in the cookie jar so the bottom line is I think the buyers are going to have an opportunity to get in long on the way up to that battle zone right but I don't I don't want to buy that area because again I'm expecting to see sellers coming in right here. Okay, so I, I, I want to I want to try to take a nibble here. I don't want to sell short here. That's the problem. I don't want to sell short here because I know it's a grind break, right? And I know, you know, unless something crazy happens overnight, I know that sellers are probably, you can see the moving average holding as support right now. It's a good first clue, right? But the sellers are probably, you're going to see the most amount of sellers coming in right above this high, right? So in other words, we have, we have our chance now to position ourselves as buyers and hopefully participate in this big move going back up, right, to retest that high. Okay, so really it all comes down to what if it goes up and what if it goes down. Hopefully it goes down first. And if it goes down first, I know this pattern like the back of my hand because I was the one who took this trade short early in my career, and I learned this by taking loss after loss after loss after loss. I learned this grind break technique literally by, by throwing money out the, out the window many years ago, okay? So I'm expecting that there are sellers who think we're bearish. Well, we are bearish. Again, I want to make that very clear. We are bearish. This is a little bit of a, little bit of a contrarian look here, right? I'm expecting we're going to see some sellers try to sell this market short, okay? Now, I've lined up these highs, right? I've got it lined up at those lows. And I've created kind of a hidden, right, trend line here. That trend line really doesn't matter, right? All that really matters is, is that prior swing, that prior swing right there. The trend line is really just, 
it's just dressing right now. It's just, it's maybe it holds, maybe it doesn't. It's not a, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my, wouldn't put my career on. Let's put it that way, right? It's kind of a hidden trend line there. It looks good. We'll see if it holds. What I want to see though is, and I want to see that moving average come over and I want to see these sellers try to sell short from there. Okay. This is a very low probability trade. But again, knowing what I did many years ago, I, I would easily see people, tra people try to do it, right? Again, I don't think that's a reliable trade. It might be successful for all I know, right? But in my experience, out of 100 of those scenarios, right, only about 40, 35 to 40 of them will be successful. So low probability, not a good odd of success, right? I'm going to look for that to fail, right? I want that to fail. And if I can get in off that failure, now we're talking, right? Now we can go running back up into that battle zone. Okay, so here we go, right? Strong move up, moving average comes over, and now I can buy that, right, that pullback going higher. Remember, you've got to get in as low as possible on these patterns. You want nothing to do, right, with buying into that, right, into that battle zone. Okay, so that's the key, right? That's the key. Get in nice and low. You don't want to buy into that area because guess what? There are going to be sellers coming in there most likely. Now, once we get back higher here, this is where things should start getting interesting, right? So let's fast forward now. Let's just say, let's, let's say we go back to the highs, right? We run back up, right? And now we're up inside that battle zone. At this point now, what you're looking for is this pattern. Looking for once, looking for twice, you want to see it holding that moving average, right? And then a buy into their stops. It's a relatively aggressive trade here, right? But that's going to be your buy into those stops. Now, remember what I'm doing is it's a one try for sellers. It's a two try for sellers. The reason why I use this is because again, right? It's a bear market. So we can't just buy blindly into where we think the sellers are coming in. We have to give them a couple shots, right, to be a buyer. Uh, sorry, to be a seller. Let them try twice, right? You want a higher high on this? One try, two try that we give them, right? We let them completely wrap the rope around their neck and hang themselves with it, right? Let them, right? Let them wrap the noose around their neck and then we're buying, right, into that second try failure, right? It's a move back above the moving average. One try, two try, failure, and then that should, usually these will run, right? These will run. Now, from that point now, now we draw up the new trend line, right? We bring it up, and guess what? Now we wait for the pullback, and we do it there, okay? So see how this kind of plays out here right now, right? That, right? That is the dream come true for tomorrow. We pull back, right? The bears, they fail below the moving average. We run back up into the battle zone. Sellers are probably, again, I can't, I can't guarantee anything, right? Probably going to sell up there, right? We see them try twice because it's bearish. Remember, don't just take the first one because it's not a bull market yet. But if they fail twice, it will become a bull market. Then we wait patiently, right? And we buy the low of that channel from there. Where's my target? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's back up. Now, you know, summertime Friday, like I said, we tend to see early morning chop, right, on a, on a summertime Friday, but we also tend to see kind of a late session rally. It's low volume, you know, there's not much, there's not much liquidity, things can move. So if we can get into something early tomorrow and get a good run higher, leave that runner, right, into the closing bell. I wouldn't recommend leaving it over the weekend. Don't leave trades over the weekend. God, right? Enjoy the weekend, right? I don't know if you can leave a trade open for the weekend. But the bottom line is, is to leave that runner, right, into that closing bell. Now, if I'm wrong about this, right? If I'm wrong about this, strength, pull back strength, right, as we, right, as we go lower, right? If I'm wrong about this, we've got some potential now for a relatively big, right, move down. We've got levels waiting down here at 7,100, levels waiting down here at 77, right? And if I am wrong on this and we either up and then dump, right, then we get our new channel down, looking for those cells off the high of that channel, right? One, two, going lower, new channel, right? Selling off the high of that channel, right? This is all the same stuff. It's just, we got to wait and see if we can get this strong move through, make them prove it to us, right? Make it prove it to us. And again, I realize I just covered a lot. 
I just condensed the last almost 15 years of my experience right into about 10 minutes there, maybe even longer, right? Don't forget, you want to get a deeper dive into a lot of the stuff I just talked about. Grab that free trading class in the upper right hand corner, right? If that little scenario didn't prove to you that I know that I, I at least have made a lot more mistakes than you have, right? I'm not saying I've mastered this, right? Anyone who says they're a master of trading is is lying to you or very naive, right? But I have definitely made quite a few mistakes in my career and I have learned right by taking the lumps and the bumps and the bruises along the way. All right, let's see here. How about some gold? Gosh, somebody get a we like a, a cattle prod or something like that for this gold right now. Get this thing, get this thing, get this thing alive right now. Um, it is range bound. We're sitting right in the middle of this range, kind of sleepy, right? This thing looks like it's something ambient or something like that. And that tells me to stay patient. I don't want to trade the middle. I want to buy the low. I want to sell the high. And I want to use the two try rule. Uh, the one thing we've seen lately on gold is this market is whippy. It is extremely whippy right now. Strong move up, right? One try, two try, failure back down. Strong move down. One try, two try, failure back up. Strong move up. Pull back to the moving average. Failure back down, right? We're seeing very strong moves, right? Strong, strong moves that are literally turning on a dime. So as I mentioned earlier this week, when you're in a range, don't let those strong jumps up or down don't let them get you fooled, right? Because this is a trading range. Let it, I'm not trying to predict the bottom, right? If we see it jump lower, I'm not buying that move lower. I'm waiting for it now to pull back to the moving average, right? If the bears want to take it lower, let them. Then I'll buy it back up. But most of the time, as you can see here, good example there, good example there, good example there, good example there. Again, I'm not making this stuff up. You can see for yourself, right? We go down one try, two try, and then, of course, failure and look for that move going back up right into that range, right? So on the gold here, one try, failure, back down in, right? One try, failure, back down in. Now remember, right, if we ever have a situation where we go one try, two try, and then back up in, and you're towards the middle of that trading range, right, wait to buy it on that pullback, right? Get it on that pullback, right, a little bit lower, right, on the way down. We see an example of it back here. Here's a good example right here, right? Strong move down. The failure puts you right in the middle, right, of that, of that trading range, and you see what happened, right? Buyers were waiting down here with their limit orders to buy as close to the low of that of that trading range that they could, right? So you want to stay as focused as buying at that low and selling at that high and stay the heck away from that middle, right? One try, two try, back up in. One try, two try, back down in, right? Use this, use this range to your advantage. Stay patient. Tomorrow, summertime Friday, we we may not get very much, right? But what we do get, you want to make sure you're ready, willing, and able to capitalize on it when you do get the opportunity tomorrow morning on the gold. And then wrapping things up here tonight on the Euro, thank you so much for sticking around me this evening. I know it's late in the evening right now in many parts of the world. Euro is bullish with a spike in channel into a range. So my plan is to buy the pullback with a target going back up to retest the high. And I'm using these range expansions to find key support levels to look for my entry patterns right tomorrow morning. I'm going to reward you guys for sticking around at the end of this video tonight. Um, as you can see here, a very, very strong right move higher here over the past right 24, almost, I'm uh, sorry, over the past, uh, yeah, 20, uh, 48 hours here. Now, strong move down. What do we look for? Yeah, two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. The only difference is, is we have a trading range here. Double tops, double bottoms. Now, in this case, I wanted to kind of flex my technical analyzing muscles, right, and show you how, right, a little bit more information of things that we use every day in our trade room. If I can grab that trading range, I take the size of that trading range, copy and paste once, copy and paste down, right, twice, this now becomes, right, level of support, level of support. At the same token, right, take that, move it up, one and two, level of resistance, level of resistance. Okay, so the idea with this is, is let's use that trading range, let's use these levels of support, right, to buy nice and low, 
right? Take a good chunk of the profit at the high and leave the runner up into the target zone. As I mentioned, tomorrow being a Friday, we oftentimes see those kind of low volume, Ill, you know, illiquid, you know, kind of rallies because nobody's there to sell against it, right? And everyone's kind of waiting for the closing bell. So keep an eye on that tomorrow, right, afternoon. The only variable we have here right now is this falling resistance trend line. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to buy down here in this battle zone, but most importantly, I wanna get above that trend line, right, and use that trend line as support, right? You know, we saw an example of this pattern on the S&P, I believe it was, right, earlier on. I know it seems like forever ago, right? But you'll notice, right, it was a falling resistance trend line there. We went up above it, came back, right, and the buy off of that one, right? That wasn't all they used. They also used this one too, right, went up, buy it, right, and go from there. So we see a pullback and we see these falling resistance trend lines, get above them, right, and use them as support. So as I look at this here, let's make this guy a little bit thicker, there we go. Let's zoom out a little bit or zoom in, I guess, right? A little bit more here. All right. So now we have that. Moving average comes over, right? Looking for that down, up, down, right? At that point, we're above the moving average. I can now be a buyer into the seller's failure, right? Again, strong move down into our battle zone. Moving average comes over. What's going to happen? Bears are going to try to sell that pullback right? Like a good bear does, right? They try to sell that pullback, just as we saw back here, right? We go below the moving average, bears try to sell it when they fail, right? It runs higher because when sellers get stopped out in a bull market, the buyers are buying and now the sellers are buying too. And that's what results in that real strong move. Look for the same type of pattern here again, right? We want to go up to that moving average, get above that trend line. Now the magic happens, right? We have that stops to get run, trend line acting as support, jumping up moving average comes over just remember right don't don't be buying into the high of that range right that's a short-term target we then look for that move up pull back right and go from there and then again right we look for that what i call a fake out breakout pullback pattern up above that high get that moving average above that high two-legged pullback, right, and up we go from there so the key here is is going to be a seller failure sorry a Right, a two-legged pullback, a, a, a basically a breakout pullback off that trend line. Right, you get a two-legged pullback off the trend line, a seller failure pattern, a buy pullback, right, bull pullback. Do not buy into the high of that range, okay, because it's just as likely to come crashing back down again than go through it. Okay, if it does go through it though, then very important, make sure we get that moving average above the top of that range, and then key two-legged pullback. Right, that's the key. Two-legged pullback, right above that high. Okay, you don't want to go the first pullback once it gets above that high because a lot of times it'll come crashing back down into that trading range. That becomes what I call the fake out, breakout, the the F O B O P B pattern, which I'm sure you guys are done laughing at that corny joke by now if you've watched this newsletter, right? But if you're here for the first time to know, it's it's a, it's a doozy. The bottom line is, all kidding aside. Trying to have some fun with you guys here tonight as I wrap things up for the week on our newsletter. But that'd be your final pattern there, right, to the upside. And again, I got a beautiful target waiting up there around 18,900, what with that range expansion zone. How do we turn bearish? How do we turn bearish? Yeah, we drop, right? We hold and we go, right? So I've got to see there's not much strength here. You notice that, right? There's no real strength. Look at how strong the market was here. Okay, remember this again? Remember, where's the NQ? Where's the NQ, right? Remember how I said earlier on the NQ, right? They got a bunch of strength down, but we don't have a lot of strength going higher yet. Remember, to get, right, to get a reversal, you've got to show strength. I don't see strength here. There's nothing on this chart right now that makes me go, oh, I shouldn't buy this, right? Nothing's nothing like that. Trust me, when a market moves on strength, what happens is buyers go, Ooh, I don't like that. I don't want to buy anymore, right? It's a punch in the gut in the bulls. That's why you got to get that strength. Then, right, a strong move is only a strong move. They've got to hold it, right, and then hold that pullback. Because if they don't, what's going to happen? It's going to fail, go up. It'll probably come back, give us a bounce right off that, right off that, off that trend line, or right up into a pullback and go back up from there. 
Okay, so if it does hold though, right? If they do hold that pullback and go lower, you got it. Now we're bearish, find that new channel, right? And sell off the high of that channel. One thing that you'll love about trading with me in the trade room is I don't chase trades. I don't chase after moves. It's one of those, I'll tell you, revenge trading, chasing after trades, right? There's no, there's no worse feeling in the world than losing money and looking back, right? Looking back in your day and going, what the hell were you thinking, Joe? Right? There's, there's nothing worse than that. You know, trading is one of those games where you can only blame yourself. Right. I can't blame anybody else. Do not blame the markets. Right. I hope we're all we're all mature enough. Right. Not to blame the markets or blame our broker. There's nobody hunting my stops. Right. I'm not that big of a fish and neither are you most likely. Right. They're not to get me. Right. So it's all me. If it was nothing worse than chasing after a trade, right, and, 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 and losing money, right? And that's one thing that I don't do. I've learned, I've learned, uh, you know, I'm human, so I make mistakes, right? But I've learned not to make that mistake, and it's one of the biggest advantages of being with someone like me every day in our trade room. Wrapping things up, guys, I've taken up way too much of your valuable time. Thank you so much for joining me here this evening. Don't forget, grab that free trading class in the upper right-hand corner, right? Grab that information icon in the upper right hand corner grab that free trading class or go right to the website here at schooltrade.com grab our free trial as part of that free trial I'll shoot you an invite for a free pass so you can learn more about our trading strategies we use here at School of Trade. And don't forget, I've got beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes here at SOT. I've got information videos. Just follow those links and learn more there. Or just simply call me in the office, right? Call that toll-free number. I'll be here tomorrow, all weekend. It forwards to my cell phone. Look forward to answering the call or hit me up on live support on the right-hand side. It's been a really good week this week. It's been a really good week, first week of the month of June. Kick some butt out there tomorrow, right? Just remember, discipline, patience, Okay, summertime Friday, get at it early and try to hold that. I'll be trying to hold that runner right into the close if we can get into something good right tomorrow morning. As always, as always, my name is Joseph. Thanks for being here tonight. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? Enjoy your weekend if I don't see you tomorrow morning in our trade room. And come back and see me again sometime. All right, guys? Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.